You can do it with uh, Dr. Jorge Haje. You can do it if you please for uh, Jim Bloomberg, he's got it. So we're all set. Uh, thank you uh, again. Uh, it is um, uh, my pleasure to welcome you to this commemorative session celebrating gift 10 years of existence. I am honored and I am moved by your presence, the founders of the GIFT Network. Thank you very much to all of you. I am so grateful that you agreed to join us today together again, as you were 10 years ago, to reflect on what motivated you to create the network. In this session, many questions will be answered concerning the origins of GIFT, the development and growth of the network, the challenges, but also the context and expectations going forward. Above all, the objective of this session is to celebrate with a reunion of leaders who continue, who continue tirelessly to fight for a better, more honest, more effective, more equitable use of public resources. Honorable gift founders, I am pleased to report that the initiative taken 10 years ago has been impactful and fruitful. GIFT has enhanced the global architecture of fiscal transparency norms, now including public participation as a basic component of public finance governance systems. And it has also improved transparency and participation in decision-making around fiscal policies at country level, at subnational level, and in communities by making fiscal information available for use. Let me take a minute to express my gratitude to those who made this possible. First, your innovative and creative vision, dear GIFT founders. Also, the generous support of donors, particularly the World Bank, the Hewlett Foundation, and Luminate. Having a home that has embraced the network with confidence and generosity to the point of sharing its prestige and credibility has been an indispensable factor to give becoming what we are today. Thanks to Warren, Vivek and the IBP team for the hospitality, your trust, and for being such open armed colleagues. Thank you also to GIFT's coordination teams, top professionals who are deeply passionate about our mission. The GIFT team of today is exceptional, but so were the teams of yesterday and the day before. My admiration and gratitude for all I have learned working with you. That said, fundamentally, the worth, the value of GIFT rests in its membership representatives of civil society groups and representatives of ministries of finance. You are the gift champions. They are, you are the ones facing enormous turbulent and constant resistance to fiscal transparency, participation and accountability. You have made the difference in all that we work for. It has been a privilege to serve you for seven of the 10 years that the network is celebrating. Along the way, I have received the best reward one can expect from devoting your life for a more transparent use of public resources. I have made friends, the friends of struggle, friends for life. Gracias. Let me now take you back to 2011. We are sitting at the IBP's main meeting room the most solemn occasion as the Global Initiative for Fiscal Transparency is about to be presented, discussed and endorsed for the first time. Back then, Sanjeev Kagram opened the meeting. Today, let me ask you this, Sanjeev, to take the floor. What was GIF created? And you wanted to share your screen too. Please go ahead. I will in a second. Thank you so much, JP. First of all, to you and the incredible team that continues the great, uh, great cause of fiscal transparency, participation, accountability in the world. Thank you and uh, for all that you do. 
as we see in, in Afghanistan today uh, and around the world, it couldn't be even more important here in 2021 as it was in 20, 2011. Um, and uh, we are grateful for all your leadership and service. Uh, for us, uh, I'm sure that Warren and Vivek from IVP, uh, uh, Jorge, it's so wonderful to see you. And it's, uh, it's after so many years, uh, dear sir, Adrian and Jim, uh, we had, uh, so Richard, <laughs> all of us that, that sat around and thought that there was a, a way to bring the sector and the field together. Uh, the idea really was, is that there was over the previous decade, really an incredible increase, really two decades, really from the 1990s when uh, IMF uh, codes were created and IBP was founded and many other rights, Vivek and others, uh, movements were happening from the bottom up and the top down. The OGP had been established. And so there was a lot of momentum. Uh, and uh, there were some incredible government leaders around the world, such as Jorge Haji and uh, Butch Abad and others that were ready to take up the mantle and at the international, Sri Mulyani uh, at, the, at the World Bank uh, and others. And so there was this window of opportunity to really galvanize the sector and the field to make a sort of big breakthrough. And, uh, you know, it took always things like that. There's a, you know, there's a, a vision, a theory of victory. <laughs> but the, the biggest part of it, as you rightfully said, my dear Juan Pablo, is the people that came together and, and brought, it, brought it to life. Uh, and we had a sort of gleam in our eye, right? Uh, Adrian, Jim, and everyone else, uh, we believed that there was uh, the possibility to do some breakthrough things. And Murray Petrie and Randy Kemp, uh, and many others were driving us forward with principles and tech support and uh, platforms and, and, and so forth and so on. I will share very quickly my screen just to show you uh, something that probably is long gone now, um, uh, which was uh, this wonderful <laughs> theory of change <laughs> uh, right here. And uh, we had this notion, right, uh, dear friends, that a connected and vibrant global to local multi-stakeholder action network with certainly the, with government and international organizations, global civil society, uh, the private sector, uh, academic institutions could come together and with that vibrant and connected network really be transformative to improve the norms, incentives, technical assistance and use of technologies towards uh, global uh, fiscal transparency, particip participation, accountability. And so, Indeed. yes. The, the screen is, is blank. Thank you for explaining. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was the theory of change. <laughs> I thought it was there. Okay. <laughs> I can see it on mine. I'll stop sharing that. We, st uh, we started with a blank page. That's true. Oh, that's fine. My bad. Um, and it was a wonderful sort of no diagram. Problem. And many will remember. And in our first, and I'll, I'll end here to pass it over to the wonderful colleagues and friends. And, you know, that meeting, Juan Pablo, that you talked about, that very galvanizing meeting where we had incredible leaders, thanks to uh, you know Richard and Adrian and, and Jim and Warren and Beck and so many others uh, from around the world, certainly Minister Haji. I remember when we had our first call, Jorge, uh, and uh, you know we were talking about who could we have as the co coordinators or the co-facilitators uh, of, the, of, the, of the gift. And you immediately said, well, we would like to work with the government of Philippines, the World Bank, the IMF, IBP, and then we would really have a uh, multi-stakeholder initiative. Uh, and then you, you pose this very important, uh, who is the subject of gift and who is the object <laughs> of gift? And it stuck in my brain ever since then. Um, in our first three year, two years of Juan Pablo and colleagues, as you remember, we did incredible things. Uh, the principles work that Murray really led and led to the gift principles and the adoption at uh, UNGA, really transformative, led by, again, the government of Brazil, the government of the Philippines, but incredible work uh, that was done. Uh, the launch of the first working group of the OGP, which was really a, a huge contribution, not only for gift, but also for OGP. Uh, the major work that was done on incentives and what could we do to galvanize the incentives and motivations uh, for fiscal transparency. And then, of course, the continuing work, as I understand it, Juan Pablo and, and colleagues, the focus on participation, the missing middle, so to speak. We could have transparency, but if we didn't really have effective, broad-based participation, how could we really have uh, accountable budgets 
that led to ex equity and sustainability. So it was a heady time, uh, and but we were honored to pass on to the baton to you, JP, and many others over the years. Uh, and it does feel, I, don't, I think I might have had hair back then. I can't remember. <laughs> and uh, but it's just wonderful to see you and all of our wonderful friends and for the work to have continued. And it's see our good brother Warren just joining and Vivek. There's so many others that I could mention, but thank you so much uh, for your leadership and championing this. As I said, it remains, if not the most central, certainly amongst the most central global causes that we can all work on to make a more sustainable and equitable world. So thank you, Jake. Thank you, Sanjeev. Dr. Jorge Ad from Brasilia. Share with us your thoughts, your memories of this important moment. Thank you very much, uh, Juan Pablo and Sanjeev and all the other colleagues. Uh, it's a real pleasure to be here today in this event uh, 10 years after we started uh, in that meeting. Looking back, we can, uh, we can perceive that together with other initiatives, GIFT has really made a difference uh, along this period of 10 years. Together, of course, with OGP, uh, OECD, uh, UNCAC, and the other international conventions, anti-corruption, and other transparency initiatives, the reality is that the ideas and concepts and the commitments with fiscal transparency uh, definitely entered, in our case in Brazil, entered into our legislation, entered into our law system in a way that it had never been so before. And more recently, it has developed from the idea of transparency, from the idea of fiscal transparency initially, then to a broader uh, area of transparency in general, not only fiscal. And more recently, it has developed into the ideas of public integrity in the public sector, coming from the, 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 the same seeds, the same origin, and also to the ideas of compliance, the ideas of other instruments in the fight against corruption in our country, and I can imagine in other countries of the colleagues also. The reality is that we have now legislation sufficiently strong in order to face those challenges in a way that we did not have before. We have legislation about specifically, in the case of Brazil, about fiscal transparency, fiscal budgeting, uh, in a broader way about access to information in general, making possible to any citizen to have access to any kind of document that is in the possession of the government, only with the exceptions strictly uh, put in the law. We have legislation uh, developed also in those 10 years about public integrity, about corporate integrity, and about anti-corruption in a more uh, general way. In Brazil's participation in those uh, international initiatives and forum like GIFT and OGP and others have been the, of great help and strength in order to make it possible for the sectors of the government 
that are uh, committed to this to make a difference. Of course, in any country, uh, governments are not uh, a unity. Governments are not monolithic in a way that everyone that participates thinks in the same way. No, it's not. This is not real. The reality is that the sectors in any administration who are committed to the reforms in general, in our case specifically to the transparency reform, depends to a great extent in the support, in the influence, in the pressures that come from the outside, come from the international environment. And in this, in this way, I am sure it has been uh, of utmost importance the inputs that we here in Brazil have received from GIF from the beginning, from GIF and from the, those other initiatives that I have briefly mentioned. And this has been maintained more or less in a more or less uh, status in spite of the tremendous political changes that we have experienced in my country. Uh, this has been maintained in spite of some setbacks. They are also part of the, of the story of the history. And our country has supported all all of these uh, changes in either governments that come from the left of the political spectrum, either of the from the center of the political spectrum, and even on the far right and the authoritarian regimes we are supporting today in Brazil. Because there always will we will have a group of persons in some of the public bodies, like CGU, for example, that have resisted, have resisted and continued to push the things ahead. So I am sure we have many reasons to celebrate together with you, Juan Pablo, Sanjeev, and all the other colleagues and I am very happy uh, to be here together with you. Thank you. Muito obrigado, Dr. Haji. Brazil has been an extraordinary member of the network throughout these years. And in spite of what you mentioned, uh, the Ministry of Finance, the CGU, always present, always contributing, always with an open heart and mind to help and learn from others. Muito obrigado. Warren, I remember some uh, frustration back then that uh, we were advancing, but not at the pace that we were hoping to. And, and at some point uh, you said, we, we have to work with governments and we have to work with IMF, the World Bank and other uh, international stakeholders. And maybe at IBP said, what? Remember that, tell us about it. Thanks, uh, Juan Pablo. And hi, everyone. It's really wonderful to see you all. Yeah, so this, this, this meeting takes us back. And uh, I do remember very clearly sitting with other uh, leaders and, and staff in IBP after several years of doing the open budget survey, lamenting that we keep on getting these little drips of progress, inconsistent and often unsustainable. And, and what would it take to uh, build the team, if you like, and the partnerships between IBP and other institutions so that we could, as I think Jim put it at the time, we could, we could substantially change the shape of the curve of improvements in, in fiscal transparency. And so we started to think about how can we do that? And 
if we brought more people onto the team in inverted commas, could we do things together that we couldn't do, wouldn't be able to do individually? And uh, we came to the idea of gift with, with everyone else. I think, uh, you know, wanting to do two, having two strategies in mind to, to lift this curve. The first one was to build partnerships with champions in powerful international institutions who we'd worked with, we talked with, but we'd never formally uh, made joint commitments with. And the second one was to help to, um, to, to, to prevent some of the differences in the application of standards and norms around fiscal transparency around the world. We were worried about a race to the bottom and we'd much rather wanted to help create a situation where we would have a unified agreement on a set of standards across international institutions and their application, as well as the opportunity to expand them to participation and, and other factors. Um, so that's, you know, that's how we, how we came to it. And the truth is that we actually had two goals when we thought about GIFT. One was a multi-stakeholder initiative, which was GIFT, and parallel to that was actually a citizens movement, a movement of civil society across the world um, that would be a parallel institution to GIFT and help create pressure in GIFT um, for, to, to, to advance our aims. But of those two, it was really GIFT that was the long shot. And GIFT was the, the the idea that caused most consternation amongst my friends in, in IBP and our, and our other institutions, as well as among some of our friends in international institutions, to tell the truth. Um, who was IBP to start creating partnerships and working with others around fiscal norms? We, you know, there were institutions that ostensibly had responsibility for those norms. And the funny thing that happened was the citizens' movement, which we thought was the easier task by far was the one that we ended up not being able to lift. And the one that worked and has worked so phenomenally over 10 years is, is, is GIFT. And there's probably a long story to be told on why GIFT worked and not the other one and, and vice versa. But I do think that it's the partnerships in GIFT um, with the champions in the IMF, the World Bank, the OECD, um, as well as the complementary efforts of champions in so many countries around the world, which has made GIFT work. There was a buy-in and an ownership in GIFT um, that was there right from the beginning that in many ways we weren't able to build on the, on the civil society side. So Juan Pablo, I guess besides, you know, uh, despite some initial hiccups, despite some tensions, despite many people thinking this is a long shot and a silly idea, it's really the people around the screen that have made it work and have made sure that we've um, you know, achieved, I think, two big things. The one is the network of champions around the world. And the second is the learning and the commitments that have taken place within that network. Thank you, Warren. I remember how pleased you were after you and Vivek had the first conversation with uh, Jim Brumby, Adrian Posar, and, and others. And since then, the World Bank has been a pillar, a supporter, a very generous companion of this initiative. Jim Brumby, thank you. The floor is yours. Uh, well, thank you, Juan Pablo. And it really is marvelous to see you all on the two screens as I shuffle through them at different times of the day. And um, you know, it is 10 years ago, but my recollection of Warren's retelling of the story is very similar to Warren's retelling. I mean, we were very concerned about the slow pace of change and wanting to change <clears throat> a bit the approach that we had to it. I think um, our view at the World Bank was that fiscal transparency was far too important uh, to be left in the hands of international financial institutions like the World Bank and the IMF, and that we needed to build a much uh, more vibrant coalition of partners and uh, influencers. Although the word influencer probably didn't exist 10 years ago, but I think that, that was the concept. 
And, you know, I attended the stewards meeting this morning, Juan Pablo, in part just to dip my toe back in uh, to see what was happening. And uh, to me, the absolutely marvellous aspect is that the same uh, amount of energy uh, and aspiration still exists around um, the gift table between, uh, between the lead stewards. And, you know, um, for my sins, I have spent quite a lot of my time dealing with ministries of finance and ministries of finance are very good at saying no, right? That's often the first um, response that a minister and a ministry of finance has. But the great thing about gift is that it brings together people that are really trying to address the question of how to get things done uh, in a positive way and to ensure that uh, the, the information that does belong to all is, is um, dealt with and provided uh, to all in a, in a much more you know, direct and transparent fashion. That said, that said, uh, the job is far from done. So 10 years is, um, I guess it's, um, it's a check mark along the way, but, but there's a lot more to be done. I'm sure that, and the world has changed a lot in, uh, in those 10 years. It hasn't gone forward on all fronts, let's face it. I'm sure uh, some others on these screens will like to talk about climate. Uh, a couple of things that worry me a great deal is that I, I, I do worry a lot about debt, partly from the point of view that, as far as I can see, that the strategies that have led to four waves of debt are very similar to the strategies that are still being talked about now. So uh, sure as the fourth wave followed the third, I'd expect the fifth to follow the fourth, and I'm not sure that that's exactly uh, what we what we want to see. Number one and number two, you know, state-owned enterprises are uh, completely different, also from what they were really ten years ago. They're now operating in many more countries, and not the countries necessarily of their ownership. Uh, so the governance, uh, the transparency, uh, the neutrality with which they operate. I think is a real concern for uh, the way that economies uh, try and get things done, the way um, citizens go about their business and the way that uh, businesses and families plan. Um, I think it's good to have a full agenda. Uh, it's not necessarily always good to have a really tough agenda, but uh, in this space, it remains tough. Um, as I said, the energy and commitment and um, Creativity, I think, is a really important aspect of gift that was there at the start, I think, still sits around the lead stewards table. And I think a hat goes off to you, uh, Juan Pablo, and all your partners uh, for being able to maintain that for so long. So back to you. Thank you so much, Jim. And thank you for starting bringing the conversation to the challenges that, that we face. If you allow me to go back to the foundations, gift wouldn't be what it is if we didn't have around the table the International, International Monetary Fund. And I remember that at the beginning, there were a present, a, 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 an important presence, but a quiet presence too. Uh, soon Richard Hughes came along with Silendra. Uh, and uh, uh, we really started moving in a very collaborative way. Silenda, thank you for representing the IMF here today uh, with uh, Jason and Carolina. We will have a chance to listen to all of you. Let's start with you, Silenda. Thank you. Thank you, Juan Pablo. Uh, let me first uh, start with uh, congratulating Juan Pablo and GIFT team and all the partners of GIFT for these 10 productive years. And uh, before I speak my words, maybe I should also say that Manal has conveyed uh, her regards and congratulations also. And she's sorry for not being able to attend this session as she's on leave right now. So GIFT is very important to us uh, now. I think I now, you know, sort of, uh, appreciate its importance more than when we started. 
Um, in fact, uh, from the IMF side, um, as you and Pablo have said, I still vividly remember my participation along with Richard Hughes on the launch event in 2011 where Sanjeev um, and uh, Adrian, uh, Jim Bromby, IBP colleagues, Rivek, uh, Warren, and a lot of others were there. And we were launching and we were discussing how to take this Axon network forward. And uh, as Sanjeev and Jim mentioned, some of these issues we discussed. And going through all these years, 10 years, I think, let me highlight a couple of things. First, when we started, you know, in 2011 at the IMF, we were actually analyzing the, uh, the 2008 global financial crisis. And one of the lessons of the crisis was that, you know, that uh, the reporting or the disclosure by the governments uh, on the fiscal position and performance was one of the key factors, you know, that contributed to the crisis because it was sometimes an illusion that a lot of uh, uh, you know, liabilities which were unreported and particularly beyond the traditional perimeter of the budget, a lot of things were not being reported. And so at the IMF, we were sort of motivated to strengthen further our fiscal transparency standards. And we were sort of uh, working on how to revamp again the fiscal transparency standards. And that was the time when uh, the gift was born. So it was actually an opportune moment for us and I, if I remember correctly, at that time, also the IBP was also trying to revamp its OBI methodology. And the World Bank was also trying to revamp its PIFA, uh, PIFA framework. And as a result, what we thought GIFT is going to be, I think, apart from, I mean, the points which Jim and uh, Sanjay and others and uh, Warren highlighted, that while setting norms and standards is an important thing by the IFIs, it's it's also equally important how to sort of, you know, take these norms and standards to the, to the governments who have to implement them. And also to bring outside pressure from the civil society so that they, they have to implement them. So this is where the gift was sort of the foundation which was just coming into being. And we used gift other than that also quite a, for a few other things as well. I think one of the first um, task of gift was to sort of set some global norms, you know, high level norms on fiscal transparency. And they, that gave us actually a forum for us, you know, because as we were developing our own standards and World Bank and IBP, to sort of share our notes across the three institutions using gift as the forum, you know, to ensure some consistency across different guidelines. So that is, I clearly remember that was one of the, you know, uh, you know, very productive outputs of the gift, gift uh, you know, forum. Secondly, as I think Warren and others and Jim mentioned, I think the gift uh, filled a, a, an important gap. I mean, the, by developing guidelines and public participation. It's, as I said, it's important, not just setting norms, but also to ensure that the, uh, the, the public um, have a more active role in fiscal decision-making through participation in the budgetary process. Two other areas I also let me highlight, which uh, from an IMF perspective, we benefited from GIFT in all these 10 years. Technical contribution by GIFT on fiscal transparency related issues. I mean, I could say that GIFT made helpful contributions to our own work at the IMF. I could give an example, for example, the it provided very useful inputs when we were you know, developing the fiscal transparency hand code and manual, you know, the handbook. And uh, in several events, regional events, you know, regional seminars or workshops, I mean, GIFT also participated, which actually raised not only the uh, visibility because I think, and also it acted as a breeze between civil society and the IMF. Last but not the least, I think um, as the GIFT membership expanded over the last 10 years, and we saw that a lot of, initially it was Brazil and the Philippines who are there, who are here today, um, who participated. But I think over the years, a lot many governments joined the forum and that helped actually um, to make, to ensure peer-to-peer -peer knowledge and experience sharing because it's 
it's it's very important to learn from other governments how they address issues and challenges to improve fiscal transparency than to just look at uh, norms and standards. So going forward, I think GIFT can continue to play a key role in all these four areas as I, as I highlighted. And, it, and again, I think it's very important as it started to bring the civil society, IFIs and governments together as part of an action network. And as a lead steward, the IMF will be happy to continue providing strategic support to GIFT and raise awareness of its work among one member countries. Thank you so much. Thank you hey, very Pete, much. May I yes. just really quickly, I'm gonna to have to go my, and my dear friends, my apologies, and it's for a good cause. Jim, it's actually to launch another global partnership on carbon removal. One of the things that you and I have talked about over the years, and we know that we don't get to net zero, let alone to removing legacy carbon from the world without carbon removal, technological and natural solutions. JP, I just wanna say three things. One is to Saliendra, I can't say how important the IMF's contribution, I'm sure Warren and, um, and Murray and everybody else, that was an incredible transformation. And it was, as you know, Saliendra, the first time the fund joined a multi-stakeholder action network partnership in an official way. And that was transformative. It was transformative not only for GIFT, but the but the the whole notion uh, of partnerships and networks. So thank you for your leadership. Number two, I just say Juan Pablo, the innovations that were launched during that early period, um, whether it was the working group, the high level principles, the participation, um, you know, norms and guidelines, all of these things uh, were were done with a lot of uh, <laughs> hard work behind the scenes, as you know, JP. A lot yeah. of put a lot of effort you know and we can't uh, underestimate uh, and, and i would and i won't be here but you know the work that murray put in geez the hours and hours and days and days and days and nights that he put in <laughs> on those principles and those 10 commandments <laughs> that we went through right Murray? <laughs> just wanted to say how much people matter and they continue to do the great leadership you provide Juan Pablo and the entire team um and then the third is i know you're going to talk about you know the future and where where does gift go from here but I guess for, for a personal plea, I do want to just reinforce that uh, on the climate change front, uh, if we can continue to push the frontier of what GIFT can do and our entire field can do in this great battle. Uh, for those of watch Game of Thrones, we can all squabble down here amongst ourselves over the thrones, but winter is coming. And uh, and fiscal transparency has to be <laughs> like the Night's Watch <laughs> uh, participation and accountability. Uh, what you know not only helps us survive but thrive. So again, my apologies for leaving, but it's for another good cause, and it's wonderful to see both wonderful old friends and great new champions of this incredible initiative. Thank you, JP, for your leadership. So good to see you, Sanjeev. Never change. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, yes, while um, you leaders were getting together and um, finding ways for incredible fruitful collaboration, then uh, someone was working hard of uh, expressing that in very concrete and uh, path-breaking path documents. Uh, and the father of the principles, Mary Petrie. Thank you, the middle of the night where you are, you're welcome, Mary. Well, thank you, Juan Pablo, and thank you, Sanjeev uh, and others. I was not expecting to, to really to say anything, but uh, I want to join others and acknowledge the, uh, the incredible leadership. I think GIFT's uh, been very fortunate to have Sanjeev and, and then Juan Pablo, two uh, people uh, the likes of which I have not worked with before and I think have been extremely important in, in the success of GIFT from my point of view. Uh, the, the possibility that the entities that I had done a lot of work with separately, uh, the IBP, the IMF, the World Bank, would come together and form a, a multi-stakeholder initiative was almost like a dream come true. So it's been a, a wonderful opportunity for, for me. And I think uh, it has, uh, has, as others have said, made a, a great contribution. I think the highlights for me in terms of uh, GIFT's contribution is probably the work around participation. I think you know we'd had transparency, uh, and as Warren said, uh, others have said there was that gap in getting to the accountability. I think the participation uh, and making that a practical uh, concept, 
for ministries of finance, uh, what was the, the challenge? And I think GIFT has been very important uh, in, in that space. I'm delighted to see from the, the current work program, the initiatives on tax transparency, something I think had, had lagged. Uh, it's great to see that happening now. Picking up uh, on, I think Jim referred to it, and certainly Sanjeev, for me, the, uh, the environment is the, uh, is the next frontier in fiscal transparency. Uh, our high level principle four talked about economic, social and environmental. There's been initiatives, uh, important initiatives in the social space, gender related budgeting, etc. For, for me, the next frontier is, is around the environment. And I see from the current work program, there's, a, there's an item there around cross cutting issues, including environmental. Uh, and I'd be, uh, be great to see GIFT getting more involved in that space. I think it's, it's an existential challenge. Fiscal, the role of fiscal policy is extremely important, both in causing environmental damage and in uh, potentially reducing it. Uh, and I think a multi-stakeholder approach in this space uh, would, would be great to see. But uh, Juan Pablo, I'd like to congratulate you, congratulate you on what you've done in the last seven years. Uh, when you came in, I think it was a, a right time for the kind of you know, superb networking skills that you have over Lane uh, with your, uh, your your understanding of ministries of finance and how they operate and civil society. So uh, congratulations to you, Juan Pablo, uh, and long may gift continue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, very much. Uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, working with you and uh, to continue counting with your collaboration. Um, one person that was um, uh, very aware of the need of, of this international um, collaboration, but at the same time, the, its implications at country level was um, Adrian Fossar from the World Bank. Uh, and um, he was um, uh, always supportive of our effort at the country level. Uh, he is always requesting for us to engage, but he was a, a founding leader of the GIFT network. Thank you, Adrian. Share with us your recollection, your thoughts. You are muted. Sorry, apologies for that. So nice to see everybody you know, that was so involved in this initiative from the very beginning and uh, Juan Pablo, Special thanks to you who've really driven the agenda since the, the start and to all your team. I know, I know that you have a very extensive team of working with you. And as you mentioned, we continue to rely on you heavily to support our work with clients. I mean, I was only just a couple of days ago talking about uh, work we're doing in Ecuador. And I found out that we're helping working with you guys as the uh, helping define what the, the government should be publishing and the quality of that information. So um, congratulations to everything you've achieved. I do think you've taken the agenda in an important direction since those early discussions. I mean, I think all the work around uh, open data around is very important. I think that's absolutely critical. And I don't think we were quite so aware of how important that would be. I think that we were aware of the importance of participation, building on the work that Vivek, um, delighted to see him there, that was doing in IBP. And I think that you've helped carry that forward. Um, I think there's a, also the, a, a sort of research agenda and trying to use evidence to build up knowledge about why transparency is important and what the benefits would be. I think all of that is very important. I do think there's certain things that have not proceeded as fast as we thought. I mean, it was interesting to hear Silendra talk about the financial crisis. And I think when Warren and I first met to discuss this, we were very conscious of the fact that um, probably the most important driver for, for ministries of finance on the transparency agenda was um, the, the impact of the markets and whether transparency would actually help reduce their, their borrowing costs or provide access to, to uh, financial markets where previously they had not had access. I, I think that's an area where we were hoping very much at the beginning of the agenda to sort of bring the private sector on board somehow. 
I'm not too sure that we've actually made quite so much progress in that area. And it's something that maybe we need to be thinking about in the future. Um, I do think the other area where we consistently have a, an issue is around the, the willing partners. You know, it's very easy to get on well with willing partners. And I think at the time, I mean, Warren alluded to this in his comments, you know, there were, we saw uh, progress being made and then reversals or what well, two steps forward, one step back as there were changes in government and, and different levels of priority given to transparency issues. Um, I think Jorge mentioned the similar sort of agenda. It's, um, I think we, we do have a challenge still in how to maintain that momentum and, and how to engage with partners that are not particularly enthusiastic about transparency. Um, one issue that I think is really critical I, is around the quality. We've tended, I mean, I think we followed the lead very much of um, the IBP in focusing on having the document, having a core set of documents being published with less consideration given to the quality of those documents and what they cover. I do remember a discussion actually I had with you, Juan Pablo, I'd actually been in Moscow and uh, we'd been talking about how they'd have this clear plan to move up the IBP index. And every year they were making, going to release another set of documents. And I had this conversation with a civil society organization, which probably I don't even know if they still exist in, in the current environment. Um, but they said to me, well, that's all very well. But the fact is that the increasingly a large number of expenditures are being recorded as secret in the, in the budget. So whilst they're publishing more documents, there's less actually less information on what the government is spending. Um, I think in, in area in terms of quality, one area which I think is absolutely essential is in terms of um, um, tax expenditures. Uh, increasingly, we see in Latin America that there is not what governments spend their money on that matters in terms of um, accountability, um, ensuring that the vested interests are not overly benefited from public expenditures. It's how they avoid taxation through tax expenditures. And Unfortunately, the vast majority of governments around the world are not publishing any information on in tax expenditures, and tax expenditures are a significant part of government exp expend opportunity cost expenditures. Um, so I think this is an area where we need to sort of double down and think about how we can improve transparency in the future. And a lot of you have mentioned um, climate change as being a key issue. I do, personally, I am very committed to this agenda. Um, I do think it's important to, for governments to align their expenditures with, um, with their climate change policies. I, I wouldn't overplay the role of government on fiscal transparency on the, uh, in the climate agenda. I do think there are other points that would be possibly more important. Um, I would focus upstream in ensuring that there is transparency about the government's plans for the future. Um, in the long term and clarity about what the, their emissions reductions targets and adaptation targets are and how those will be implemented. Um, the vast majority of expenditures on climate change are going to come from households and businesses and the private, uh, the public sector is probably going to be a, a relatively minor player. Um, but still, it's important what the public sector does as a signaling device. Um, so overall, I think, you know, a fantastic job you've done both at the global level and at a country level. And I look forward to many years of future collaboration. So thank you. Thank you so much, Adrian. It will be our pleasure to continue working with the people like you at the World Bank. Uh, now that you mentioned uh, the great challenges of our future agend agenda, let me ask Jason Harris for his thoughts. And then I'll ask Vivek to close uh, from his perspective, uh, uh, the, the challenges that we still face uh, about something, something that was mentioned, and that is the, the distance we still have between what is being disclosed and the meaningfulness of that information, the quality of that information for civil society. Jason, to you, please. Thank you very much, Juan Pablo, and uh, huge congratulations to you and all the generations of the teams that have 
have been working so hard over the last 10 years. It's really been a, a really a wonderful uh, um, effort to be a part of, and, and we're really glad to be part of it. Um, so Landra talked a little bit about, uh, you know, where we were 10 years ago, sifting through the entrails of the, the financial crisis and trying to work out the issues that were coming out of there. And we did pick up that a lot of the problems were the reporting, the understanding of what was going on at the time. 10 years on, I think we've seen a lot of improvements in there. And the work that, that GIFT has done has, has been a big part of that. Uh, our own efforts with the Fiscal Transparency Code and Fiscal Transparency Evaluations were heavily in, influenced by the GIFT's um, input in there. And in particular, you can see some of the work that's been done on the public participation showing up through the work of the international financial institutions. So there's been real, real benefits. And in fact, one, one point there that 10 years ago, I was scratching my head a little bit about the importance of things like gender and, and regional uh, reporting and things like that. Yet, you know, I was, I've been since uh, been proven incorrect there and, and gender is now one of the, the fund's major um, priorities. And the work that was, the, the input that the GIF gave 10 years ago on that participation uh, meant that, that, you know, overall we're, we're, we're on board with that and, and we're, we're actually taking a leading role. So really um, that shows some of the insight that, that GIF has provided. Looking ahead, well, we're going through another crisis and hopefully in a year or two time, we won't be scratching our head wondering what's going on. Um, I think in real time, um, we've seen some response to the COVID, um, the work that the IBP have done, the work that GIFT has done, in, in identifying some of these huge spend and huge um, actions that have been taken by governments to um, counteract the impact of COVID, we've seen a huge amount of effort to increase the transparency of those interventions, understand who is receiving the funds, who's receiving the, the cash that's coming out or the guarantees, and understanding who the beneficial, the beneficial owners of some of the companies that are receiving some of these huge contracts. We're seeing a lot of effort put in in advance um, to try and ensure that transparency. And, and that's something that, um, you know, the gift has, has been a big part of with its information, push to increase participation, but also the public exposure of information that the public can, can have a look at and do their own assessment of these kind of things. So the crisis that we're, we're dealing with right now um, has a big part to play, but also some of the work that, that's coming up as we speak, um, the inclusion of the tax transparency principles, but also the inclusion of subnational governments within the GIFT network is also something that, that we can look forward to uh, seeing, seeing some of the fruits. I mean, subnational governments, we often don't pay as much attention to them, but they do make up around 20% of the spending that goes on. They're the ones closest to the uh, society, closest to the community. Um, and they also maintain a huge amount of public assets, on average around 25% of GDP of the state's assets are run by local governments. So the inclusion of those within the framework uh, is really important. So let's hope uh, in 10 years time, uh, we still see some of the faces, uh, still see some hair on the heads and um, maybe <laughs> not, not too gray. Um, and uh, we'll be able to talk about what we've achieved coming out of this crisis and what GIFT's uh, role has been in that. So congratulations again, and we look forward to working together with everyone and putting our collective shoulders to this fiscal transparency wheel. Thank you so Thank much, you. Jason. To you, Vivek. Thank you, Juan Pablo. And it's really wonderful to see all these uh, uh, familiar faces, many of which I have not seen for uh, several years, and to hear from them. And it's really a hard act to follow when such uh, inspiring senior leaders from our community have, uh, the fiscal transparency community, have gone ahead of me. Uh, but let me start with just what a joy it has been to be part of this uh, community. And um, one of my most memorable times, fun times, uh, uh, at GIFT was in a meeting that had been organized in Brasilia. Uh, and this was in the initial days of, uh, of GIFT. And uh, we were all, uh, we flew in there from different countries and uh, most of us got there late in the afternoons and we were immediately ushered into a, a restaurant and I didn't pay much attention to where we were going. Uh, I sat in my table, it was a long table and um, the, uh, the, the, attendants came and they handed me a photograph of a cow 
And I thought as a good Hindu that this is remarkable. Even back in India, we aren't given the holy cow as an image to look at when we start our meals, only to be then told that the rest of the meal was going to be different parts of the cow that were going to be served to me. Uh, so I asked the, the, the waiter that, look, I can't eat the cow. Uh, if you have milk, I'll have that. If not, whatever you feed these cows, please bring them over to me. Uh, the, uh, there were many other such memorable times that I've had with colleagues here, but I've also learned a lot from the gift network. Uh, as we've heard from uh, the different perspectives that have been shared, uh, we've all come at fiscal transparency from many different angles and all of them are as important as any uh, one that has been presented uh, my own background on this has been one around uh, the the um, links to justice uh, many years ago before i even joined the ibp i was with a social movement in india where uh, peasants and workers were fighting for minimum wages to be paid from them from government programs so a group of my colleagues peasants and workers uh, they gathered around a government office a local government office and demanded that they be paid their minimum wage but the officials refused to do so and so my colleagues said we're not going to leave till you give us this information. And there were 50 of them that surrounded that office. Ultimately, the official came out with a file and said, look, this file shows uh, that you have been paid the amount that was due to you. So when my colleagues asked that official, give me the file, he said, no, I can't give you the file. The Official Secrets Act of, uh, of 1923, which was still British India, uh, prevents me from giving this information over to you. Uh, so my colleagues then left and several of them were uh, had not received any formal education. Uh, one of them, an elderly man, could not even read and write. And he at the meeting then told uh, the rest of us that, you know, there seems to be some magic in those records, in those files. And until we get access to those files, we are not going to get access to our livelihoods. So we need those files. That was the motivation behind why people in different parts of the world have also got involved in the fight for fiscal uh, transparency for, for information. It is very centrally linked to the demand for justice for a level playing field. And whether it is on issues like climate that were discussed or on tax transparency or gender justice or any of the other issues, ultimately we are asking for this information because we believe that those who hold the information are holding on to power as a result of that information. And we'd like that power to be shared more broadly with all of us so that there can be shared prosperity in our uh, societies. GIFT has provided a much needed platform for many of us who are like-minded people, but who've come from many different backgrounds to join forces and make a collective demand that the kind of societies that we want to live in are ones in which information is going to be shared because power is going to be shared and justice is going to be available to people. Martin Luther King said, Junior said in his famous uh, quote, that the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. Change takes a long time, but it eventually comes. I think GIFT over the last 10 years is seeing much of the same, that there have been some successes, perhaps not as much as many of us would have anticipated, but we are going in the right direction. And more importantly, we do represent those communities that are seeking truth and justice. And so even as we are facing the dark clouds of in many countries in which populist leaders are coming up with policies and have attracted through the cult of their personality, uh, the, pop, the, the support of their populations, there is a more relevance for gift today than ever before, because basically what we are asking for is for power to be shared and justice to be provided to, to everyone. Now, we are, of course, also in a much changed world today than we were uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, when we began thinking of GIFT. The landscape has changed much. The data landscape has changed much. The platforms through which information is being shared is being changed much. There is today a much greater burden on us to be able to prove that transparency and data disclosure and sharing truly is beneficial because 
people who are perhaps not as like-minded as we are have also shown us the dark sides of disclosure. Data privacy issues have come up, information technology and social media platforms have shown us also the concerns around sharing of, uh, of information. Alternative facts have been shared as phrases uh, that really are mind boggling in many ways as to what that even means, which just means that we can't take it for granted that if we just say that we stand for fiscal transparency, that the broader community will just join forces with us. We need to be more innovative now, much sharper in the strategies that we deploy, but we need to stay true to the original motivations that brought us here. We can try and move into new issues, climate change, tax, gender justice, any of those issues. I don't think that that matters. The beauty of fiscal transparency is that it lends itself to many, many different issues because ultimately the rhetoric of government policy needs to be matched by spending and that spending is what we are ultimately interested in. So uh, I hope as a community, we are here 10 years also down the road because we have a relevance that is uh, not to be defined by time. There's never going to be a time when a community like GIFT is not going to be relevant because as long as governments are collecting and spending money, as long as power is and lack of power sharing is relevant in our world, as long as injustice exists in our world, we need communities like us to exist and, 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 and uh, do the good job that is needed. Thank you. Bravo, Vivek. Thank you, my friend. And uh, colleagues, we have... Um... Uh, here around the screen, people from Senegal, Mongolia, Costa Rica, Mexico, Brazil, South Africa, Slovenia, Dominican Republic, Ecuador, the Philippines, Chile, Argentina, and Uruguay, and many others. Members of the GIF network you created. So members of the GIF network, help me giving a hand to the founders of our network. Bravo. Now, let me open the floor to questions, additional comments, uh, some uh, uh, um, questioning that you may have uh, to GIFT and uh, the GIFT founders. Bonjour. What uh, has been missing? Allez-y, madame. Oui, bonjour. Good morning. Bonjour. Good morning. You want to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Lele. I am an information anal analyst in the Ministry of Economy and, and Finance in Tunisia, and uh, also support to, for investment. I also wanted to talk about our experience in Tunisia in terms of budget transparency. First, Tunisia is a member of uh, several government uh, partnerships since 2014. The objective of these initiatives is to have a budget transparency, a reality, and to have the rights of access to information available, uh, support with the Ministry of uh, Finance with citizen budget. This uh, was a department that was created inside the Ministry of Finance in terms of the execution reports of our quarterly account uh, report has been, this has been put on a portal in the government for better budget transparency. Uh, legislatively, we have uh, drafted a tax to have all the rights to access of information available also openness to data has been promoted we are working on gender perspective my question here to the gift stewards in terms of participation what is your contribution or your events or actions that you have made or that you are thinking of doing to promote the uh, participative approach whether in budget preparation or budget policy making. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Lelik. Well, 
First, we are going to thank you for all the efforts that your country has undergone. We are really glad to know that you're continuously working with us. For the moment, we're working with five countries on public participation projects. When it comes to budgeting processes, there are many countries with many experiences like Mexico and Brazil, and we are really happy to uh, include you in this meeting so that this uh, and that this meeting is uh, in French as well in order to make sure that you are uh, as a country member in the possibility to have uh, exchanges and for better transparency. Thank you very much. Remarks from the audience, please. Or the founders would like to make additional remarks. Let me say that um, uh, Florencio Butch Abad, GIF founder in the Philippines, was uh, a, a confirmed, unfortunately, maybe given that it's almost midnight in the Philippines, uh, he couldn't join us at the end. And, and also, uh, Sri Mulyani, a founder back then at the World Bank, today Minister of Indonesia, of, of Finance in Indonesia, uh, couldn't join us. Um, other questions, additional remarks? Let me ask uh, current GIFT uh, members. This is your opportunity uh, to um, either uh, thank, uh, comment, or express uh, what you be, what you think about the network to uh, its founders. So, colleagues, Dr. Ran, uh, Julieta de Asig, George Newman, Open Contracting Partnership, welcome, Juan Castillo, and many others. Giselle Graviero, welcome. You have mentioned, yeah, Dr. Ann, are we gonna hear from you from Nigeria, please? My connection is not You are very... connected. Okay. Am I... Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Well, it's my pleasure on behalf of Nigeria to have been um, part of a uh, gift family. And we've been working with uh, gift for about four years now, I think since 2018. And uh, we've enjoyed the support and the assistance um, gift has provided for us. Before now, unfortunately, we use I look forward to gift annual meetings, but COVID um, told us to sit at home. <laughs> but I'm glad to have dialed into the opening section earlier in the day and now this uh, fiscal transparency section. Thank you, Dr. Ran. We're working uh, with Dr. Ran in Nigeria on public participation, on fiscal transparency, and uh, uh, we're always uh, very grateful for your support. Other colleagues? Paula Diaz, oh, buenas tardes. Observatorio Gasto Fiscal Chile. Hello, uh, from the Fiscal Observatory in Chile. On behalf of the Observatorio del Gasto Fiscal, I'm going to uh, speak in Spanish, so it's easier for me. Uh, simplemente um, dar las gracias. I, I just want to thank the Gift Network for us. This network resulting for fiscal transparency gift uh, providing us with platforms has been really helpful. Ever since 2017, if I'm not mistaken, 
y desde I've esa been a part of this work. And so we've been provided with a platform to work with uh, accountability and fiscal policy making and in hand with a stronger perspective from civil society. Fiscal, uh, this uh, association that I work in is a cival society non-profit organization with public expenditure focused in Chile. We have previously, in previous years, incorporated uh, public and private sectors and ministries, uh, including IVP and other very important partners. We've had advocacy thanks to these standards resulting from the framework and the spirit resulting from gifts pushing forward. This is important for democracies, public debt scenarios, risk management, also appropriate monitoring and follow-up, both on a national scope and internationally. Especially within the context that we are experiencing today, such as COVID. We are then fostering transparency, trustworthiness, democracy. And so I thank you on behalf of Chile. And we are here to have lessons learned written down. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paula. The moment that they are going through is uh, yet again very illustrative about how important in any democratic discussion to have at the center the need for transparency and accountability in the use of public resources. Thank you for that kind of very important reminder. Uh, thank you, Jay Cruz. We have your, your comments and uh, your expression of uh, acknowledgement. Uh, we are very grateful for that. So, uh, Dear gift founders, any final thoughts? We are getting close to the end of the session. For some of you, it's awful late. Any uh, concluding remarks from you? So let me take uh, Jason's uh, invitation, uh, not his challenge to be here uh, without uh, 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 with with hair. I would probably be there without any. But let me take his his invitation to see you uh, in uh, uh, ten years. Uh, I'll see you before that for sure. But um, let's uh, uh, look forward to another ten years of pushing this agenda. In uh, uh, my experience, uh, this is an, a, an endless uh, work. As many of you have said, it's one step forward and two steps uh, backwards. And uh, uh, two conditions allow us to move forward. Governments with public servants adopting with passion this agenda in spite and against all odds, and civil society owing it to. Uh, we have seen that what ensures sustainability of our work is civil society strongly uh, asking, demanding it, and using it. Some of our partners have left this ship along the way because they were a little bit disappointed. Fiscal transparency didn't solve everything didn't change all the system, didn't uh, um, end uh, with uh, corruption. But what we know for good is that the communities 
people, citizens that use it, get empowered. And that makes a very important, significant uh, difference. We need to continue working, therefore, to make sure that more people, with the help of more civil servants, use transparency for their benefit and to have access to the services they are entitled to. Thank you again. Congratulations. And let's go for another 10. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.